everyone, it's Jen. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I am sharing a tutorial for how to put this project together, and this is the Peppermint Candy Shaker Box. Um, I had a request or two to show how I put mine together, so I am more than happy to show you. Very easy to put together, and it comes out so cute. So yeah, let's put one together together. Um, this is the die set that you will need, and this comes from Chaos Craft. I will leave the link down below in the des description box. So it um, it comes with all these pieces. This one is the main piece and you'll cut out two of these. This is the layering piece for the ends of the wrapper or the box and you'll cut out two of those as well. And then this is the bottom of the box this one right here and you'll need one of these. This is a layering piece for the bottom, one of those. These two are um, buckles for the strap. You'll need one each of those. This is the, um, the frame if you want to make it into a shaker, which I'll show you how to do. And you'll cut out this with, uh, well, you cut this out of pattern paper and of your, uh, whatever you're using. I use Dollar Tree foam board to pop mine up. This is a, a background circle that you'll cut out your acetate and your backing piece for the shaker. This piece is optional. I'm not going to use it in this project, but this cuts out a candy, candy swirl. And then this one is a bow, which is um, just decorative to put on the ends of your candy, which I did cut out twice, so I'll show you that. So uh, to save time, I cut mine out ahead of time. And these are all of my pieces. I cut out a couple of extra pieces as well. This piece here is the strap that I'm going to be using, which is the same uh, measurement as this one here. And this one is a piece of paper that is one and an eighth inch wide and mine is 12 inches long. And then I scored it at each end at a quarter of an inch and folded it in. And you'll see why I do that at the end when we put it onto our project. So these are all the pieces I cut out. I am using for my pattern paper the Gingerbread Kisses collection from Doodlebug. It just came out and I absolutely love it. So I thought this would be a great um, excuse to use it. So I used it for that main piece and like I said you cut out two of those and then I used it for this piece. This is going to be the back of the shaker just so it looks consistent with the with the main piece. This is going to be the the bottom of the box and I used some basil cardstock paper. This is an aqua color obviously and I used this piece here for the layering piece for the bottom. For my shaker, I cut it out of that same aqua paper, that, well, for the frame of the shaker. This I used acetate to cut out the cover of my shaker. And what I use is Duralar uh, 0.005 clear film. You can get it on Amazon. It comes in different sizes. I usually get the nine by 12 inch. It comes in 25 sheets. This cuts out really well with your thinlet dies. So that's why I use it. Um, and it glues well too. So I never have any problems with this acetate. So I definitely recommend this if you wanna make your shaker maker, shaker making easier. And then these are circles that I cut out that are not in the die set, but these are three and a quarter inch circles. I, I have a die that matches that, but this will cover the inside of the shaker and I'll show you how to, or the inside of the box, I'll show you how that works, but it's not necessary just to finish it off if you would like to. And then um, I use that aqua paper for the buckles and some more clear acetate for the edges of the shaker box. And then I use that same polka dot paper from Gingerbread Kisses for the little bows. And we'll add some like bling and embellishments as well. But let's get started in constructing the box. So first you're gonna take your bottom piece. And um, there are lots of different ways you can use adhesive. I typically like to use, when I have all these like little notches here, I like to use double-sided tape. And this tape here is, um, it's about four millimeters. And I get this at, or I got this at Alina Crafts on AliExpress a long time ago. It's It was a huge roll, it's still pretty big. Um, use whatever kind you like, but you're going to go ahead and add that onto the, let's see, 
Is it on the inside or the outside? Okay. You're going to add the double-sided tape on the inside portion or the wrong side of your paper. So I'm going to take mine and place it. Let me zoom in so you can see a little bit better. I'm just going to go ahead and put it on the tabs. And I'm going to start at one end and then go all the way to the other. And then just cut it off at the end just you know right along where the little tab is and then what I like to do is take my precision scissors and then cut those notches out and you know like I said there are different ways to do it you can add glue if you'd like um, you could add individual pieces of the double-sided tape but for me, this is the way that seems to go the fastest. Sometimes they'll pop out right away. Sometimes they just go back in and take the little um, notches out. But I like it best when they pop out right away. Just like that. And that way you'll have tape on the, on the notches and that's it. So when you go ahead to fold these, every little piece is covered and I'll just show you the rest of this one and then I will do the other side off camera just to save a little bit of time but you get the idea with all of these little notches um, you want to do what works best for you if you like to use liquid glue that's great um, hot glue I would not suggest just because it dries so quickly oh see that piece came off and it doesn't give you enough like wiggle room. Okay, so you can see how the double-sided tape is all on the notches here. This piece, the backing piece came off, but the tape is still there. So I'm gonna do the rest of it and I'll be right back to show you the rest. Okay, so I've got tape on both sides of the little glue flaps and then we're gonna go ahead and um, tape these guys down. These are just, they're not really needed to, to um, tape anything together but they're there for reinforcement so I'm going to take my double-sided tape put them on the other side of the paper same way but just on the other side like that and then just peel off the backing like that and then just fold it down And then do the same thing for the other side. Actually, you could do this going the other way too. It really doesn't matter because you're gonna be covering these up with the uh, layering piece that we have. Okay, so this is gonna be the bottom and you just kinda wanna bend it a little bit just to make it a little more pliable because it is gonna be a rounded bottom, just like that. And then uh, bend all of the little flaps up at the score line. And if you want to, you could take your bone folder and just kind of, you know, push them down just like that to get them all down. And I'll do that on both sides. And I'm going to put the layering piece on at the end. So you could put it on now if you wanted to, but I don't know. I just like to construct my 3D paper projects with as little layers as possible, and then I add them at the end. That's just me. You can do whatever you want. Okay, so that's going to be the bottom of the box. And I do like to mark the middle because you want it to be even going up from side to side, and um, I find it easier just to mark it a little bit. So I'm going to do that now and I'm going to take my ruler, just mark it at the middle and it is about five, almost five and a half inches. So I'm going to mark it at two, uh, two and three quarters, just a little bit right there on both ends. And you'll see why I do this later. You don't have to do this. It's just, you know. It was helpful to me the first time I made it, so why not do it again, right? 
Okay. And then we're going to do that the same thing on this piece too, because this is going to be glued on at the center at the bottom of this part. So take your ruler and I measured, let me turn it over, from the little notch to the notch and that is three inches. So at one and a half will be the middle there. And this, you know, doesn't have to be exact, but I just made a little notch there and I'm going to do that on the other one as well. And that's at the bottom of the circle. Okay, so let's get started constructing this. So we're going to go ahead and take our bottom piece and I'm going to take off the double-sided tape from one side. All right, so I got all of that double-sided tape off and you see where my middle, line, middle, middle mark is right there. And I'm gonna take my um, front piece here where I have that little mark too as well and I'm just gonna match them up. And then just kind of press lightly there. And then you're going to start bending your bottom piece to fit the circle of the front panel. And then just kind of press it as you're going just so it stays adhered. So I'm going to stop when I get to the little corner there and then go back to the other side. And then just keep pressing. Just go slowly here so it, you know, it's nice and even and neat. Take your time. No need to rush. If you have to start over, if you don't press too hard, you could still peel it up a little bit like I just did. And then start again. So it'll look like that. Okay. And then go ahead and press. I'm just using my fingers to press underneath here to make sure they're all nice and secure. Okay, then you want to come in here and finish the circle like that. Just kind of keep turning it while you're pressing it down. Don't make it go straight off to the side like that. You want to keep turning it so it's still a circle. Like that. So that's how the front looks. You can see how it's coming together. So now we're going to go ahead and take off this layer of the protective paper. All right, that paper is all off. So we're going to do the same exact thing with the other side. You're going to take the bottom where you made that little pencil mark for the midpoint and just put it at the midpoint of the bottom piece just so they line up and just press that down a little bit right there just to start you off. And you can use your hand in the back underneath to help you press. Okay, then we're gonna go along one side, just curve it. I'm curving it with my right hand as I'm pressing down with my left hand. And by pressing down, I mean pressing those glue flaps up to meet the pink part. All the way up to you get to the the bend there and then go to the other side and do the same thing it's really not hard you just have to take your time unless you're you know really good at it and you can go quicker but alas i am not and i just have to take my time nothing wrong with that all right so we got to the corner here just going to go underneath and press those little glue flaps to meet the pink candy part. And then just like in the front, you want to make sure that you just keep curving the bottom part. Okay. Just don't give up on the circle when you miss when you're when you're past this part, just keep keep turning it. You don't want it to be like straight like a diagonal there, you still want it to be on a curve. So just curve it and you'll, you'll feel it curve. Just kind of like reach to this part here. OK, 
Okay, and press down those glue flaps or glue tabs. And look, we have the base of our box. Look how cute it looks already. So now is the time when we do all the finishing touches. Let's make a shaker to go on the front of this. So I've done shaker tutorials on my channel before. We're just gonna quickly go over again how to do that. So this is the, uh, the frame piece. This is the just pattern paper, but it's really just a solid aqua paper. And this is my foam. This is Dollar Tree foam. It's actually a pink one. And um, this is one of their older ones that cuts out really nicely. So I've been using the pink. And I cut out a circle in my acetate, my Duralar acetate. So what I usually do first is I put some glue around my pattern paper and then stick on my acetate. And for my glue, I use uh, Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. My labels always look like this after I've been using them for a while. I've got a stainless steel pin in there to try and keep it from clogging, even though it still clogs a little bit with this. So um, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna take this and run a thin line of glue all the way around. You wanna make sure you don't skip any spots because if you skip spots, then it's not gonna adhere well in that spot and you're gonna have a gap, which is not good in a shaker. So again, take your time here, get a thin layer all the way around. That's what's most important all the way around. Not a lot, just about that much. Let me zoom in so you can see. see? not a lot. And then take your acetate layer and lay it on top. Don't try not to move it around if you can help it. You want to just get it on perfectly the first time. I have a little extra hanging off there, but it looks fine on this side. So I'm just going to trim that when um, it's done. And if you have like smudges like I do right there, hang on. Then just take a microfiber cloth and just kind of wipe it off while it's still a little bit damp. And even if it's not perfectly clear, when you get your shaker bits in there, you won't be able to notice it. But just, you know, if you want to get some big blobs off, take your microfiber cloth, maybe dip it in a little bit of water before you do that, and you can get that glue right off. That, I do that all the time and it looks fine. So, you know, don't worry about using wet glue for your shakers because I find it to be the best. And um, if you have a little bit of a mess, then that's okay. So see where I have that extra layer there? I'm just gonna take some my Cutter B scissors and just trim that off. This base circle is a little bit bigger than it needs to be so it's okay if it doesn't fit perfectly it's still covered on the other side and it looks fine so then I take my foam layer and I'm going to add that same glue to that and if you keep your glue towards the outer edge there's less risk of it getting on your S T. sometimes that works for me sometimes it doesn't of course, when I'm doing tutorials, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, so I've got it on every part. And then just take your top part that has the acetate and the pattern paper and lay it on top and press it down. Make sure you press everywhere. Run your finger along every part where it contacts. Okay, you don't want any little bits coming through. That's the worst, right? When you're making a shaker and then parts come out of it. Oh, I hate that. So luckily that does not happen often. And if you follow this technique using these products, it works really well. You know, usually I say use whatever works for you and I, you know, do mean that, but I do find that Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive works really well for um, shakers as well as this specific kind of acetate. Okay, so I just went and got some things to make a shaker mix. So I got a few colors of diamond dots. These are white, pink, and aqua. And I love to use these in shaker mixes just because they add movement, um, they're small, 
and they come in so many different colors so I think they mix really nicely with sequins and other things that you add to your shakers and they they you know flow perfectly well when you have a, a layer like this the Dollar Tree foam board so I put those in as the base and then we're going to add some other things I brought over uh, one of my containers these are from Harbor Freight a lot of you guys use these too I'm sure and these are like a lot of my pastel Cartwright sequins so let's take some colors that match the colors of our paper so let's see um, this is bashful this is a really pretty like pinky peach color so we'll add a few of those sometimes when I make shaker mixes I make them in a little dish ahead of time but this time I'm just going to make them right in the acetate and then pale ocean blue green that kind of looks nice right yeah let's add a few of those it's good when you add like different sizes of um, sequins and shaker bits just to you know make it a little more interesting I think maybe a couple more of those okay how about a few yellow ones too since there's some yellow in this paper we'll take some pale yellow confetti and add some of those and then to make it a little bit more Christmassy I have these gingerbread hearts from Trinity stamps and maybe we'll add a few of those yeah that looks good I think that's good might be a little sparse let's see one more thing we can add maybe some like white sequins I don't know if I have any here mm, no I don't have any in here let's take a smaller more solid aqua color yeah there we go that's good just a little something extra to that okay so that's our little shaker mix and that's basically how many I like to add just that um, you know level of shaker bits sometimes actually usually sometimes more but that way that way it'll be fine we'll get to see more of the paper behind it so then you take your backing piece and you're going to gl add glue around the edge of your foam board just like you did before stick to the outside Make sure you get every little part. Don't skip. Make sure all the shaker bits are inside, not trying to escape yet. A little bit more there. Okay. And then take your circle, put it right side down on top of your shaker. And then press all the way around. This ensures a nice seal so nothing is escaping and I've sent lots of shakers through the mail just in regular envelopes never had a problem with the mail anyway okay once you're sure that everything is secure you could turn it over and that's what it looks like actually that's a good amount because you could still see the background but it still has enough to shake so I do I like that that looks really cute so then you're gonna go ahead and take your box that we made decide which side you want to be the front which you want to be be the back sometimes you know the pattern will be different on the front or the back so we're gonna keep this one as the front but you know what before we glue this on we're going to add the the end parts of the candy so like I showed you before I cut mine out of plain acetate for my example I use some Cricut acetate that has little red dots on it but this one I wanted to be able to see or make sure that you could see the the pattern paper beneath it so I'm just going to use this one so um, this is just the plain acetate the same one I'm going to see where it fits over I think it's there and there and I don't want to glue it all the way down first of all because when you glue acetate then you could see the glue marks but um, I also want it to be able to come up a little bit so it adds some dimension so I'm just going to glue it right here where it meets the the inside of the box so I'm going to take my 
glue once again my deluxe adhesive and just add some glue right there and then we're going to glue or press that part down And then we'll do the same thing on this side. So this glue dries clear. You'll still be able to see it a little bit when it dries, but it won't be a big deal because we're going to have things to cover it up. So that is the edges of our candy box. Now we can go ahead and take our shaker and glue it on the middle. For that, I'm going to use my... Um, Beacon or Beacon 3-in-1 glue. Hang on one second. So I'm just adding a bunch of glue on this, the back of my shaker. And then I'm going to glue it on. Depending on your paper, you want to make sure that it's straight up or down. This paper is kind of like a scatter, but I am going to try and make these guys go straight up and down. So just put it into place and then press it down like that. All right, it's really coming together nicely. And let's go ahead and add the buckles now. So as you can see in my example, you just kind of glue them onto the, the bottom piece. So we're going to add some glue. I'll use my deluxe adhesive because it dries clear. Just put some on like that. And this is not, it doesn't really matter where you put it, but you want it to be even on both sides, that's all. All right, there's one side, we'll do the other. Okay, now let's go ahead and add the layering piece on the bottom. Like I said, you could have done this earlier. It's probably much easier to do it earlier. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna do it now. So I'm just bending this because it's gonna be a curved piece. So just to kind of break the fibers a little bit and make it easier to glue in there. Again, I'm going to use my beacon glue because uh, it covers a, a bigger area easier. Okay, there's my glue. I'm just gonna take this and carefully put it down. so it's even and then press it in and the beacon glue takes a little bit longer to dry too so I could still move it around a little bit here if I need to how fun does that look inside right with the double-sided paper so I did cut out circles for this side of the paper or this side of the box um, it will add some security I mostly did it on this box here because it was just white inside, but I will still add that. I will still add them to this box, the ones that I cut out because I do have them and they will cut out the, they will cover up the little glue tabs too. So these are the circles I added. Remember these are three and a quarter inch circles that I cut out from a separate die that I had in my stash. Like I said, you don't need them at all. It works fine without them, but I am going to add them because um, I just, I like the extra security and the fact that it covers up the glue tabs. So I glued that one and there we go. Just gonna press that in. There's a border all around it, which is fine. And I'll do that to the next one as well. Okay, so that's our box so far. Now the only thing we have left to do for the actual construction is the handle. Then we'll add some embellishments. So this is the strip that we cut out before. Just cut out freely. Um, mine is one and an eighth inches times 12. 
a 12 inch one will give you a handle like this you can make it shorter or longer whatever you want so I'm going to add glue to the inside of this flap and this flap I remember I had scored this at a quarter of an inch just to make it a little flap so you have glue on there and then you're just going to hook it into the that little opening on the buckle right in the middle and then just press it so it seals and try and do it evenly like that and then just bring it over well put glue on the other side I think I'm gonna have to open a new glue bottle soon okay so there's glue on that side and then bring it over to the other buckle put it right in the middle then grab that flap like that and then just hold it until it seals I'm going to do that for both sides okay so that's how it looks let's take our bows that we cut out these are the little embellishment bows I'm just going to add a little bit of glue on the center of these because again I kind of like them to be loose so they can you know add some movement to this box got just some glue hanging out in the edge of that nozzle so I'll just use that and put it right on the edge like that of our acetate which is covering up the pattern paper and we're going to do that to the other side too All right, now on this one, I added these uh, cute little blings. I think I'm going to find those again because I really like those. Hold on one sec. All right, I changed my mind. We have these shape sprinkles from the Gingerbread Kisses collection. Why not use these, right? So let's take these and we're going to use the smallest size. I think the yellow ones will look the best because we haven't used too much yellow in this yet. And they do complement the, the paper. So I'm going to take off my yellow peppermint and then just add that to the middle of the bow yeah that looks so cute right so we'll take off another small yellow one and add that press it down yeah that's cute and then i was thinking for the back i would add some ephemera and this is from the um chit chat from gingerbread kisses so this is the baking spirits bright and i went ahead and put some double-sided foam tape from dollar tree and we're going to glue this to the back and it just fits perfectly onto that circle look at that right and that just adds a nice touch to the back of your box so it is cute from start to finish I love this little box. Let me measure it in case you missed my video showing the first one. From side to side, it is five and a half inches. Top to bottom of the box itself is about three and a half inches. It's about two inches deep. So it'll hold a nice amount of goodies in there. And for this one, I added the Christmas banners from KS Craft. That's also available on, in their shop. There are different words that you can add to the banner. Um, so I'm not sure what I'm going to add to the top of this one, top of this one. But I did want to just show you how to construct it. And this video has gotten pretty long, so I think we'll stop here with the embellishment. But I probably will continue to add some little touches to it. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for the request. Remember, you can always ask me if you um, need some, you know, inspiration or guidance of how to put a die set that I show together. I'd be more than happy to show you if, um, you know, if it hasn't been shown before. So thank you so much for watching. Again, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment and I'll be back soon with more crafty videos. This peppermint candy shaker box will be listed down below in case you're interested in purchasing the die set. So thanks again for watching and I'm going to continue embellishing this and I'll show, show you on Instagram once it's all done. All right, everyone, take care and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.